Hi, I'm Thomas Jan Peterson, one of the co-founders of Copenhagen Atomics. Now I'll just briefly explain what it is that we want to do. Uh, there's a lot of nuclear waste in the world. Uh, last part of that is used nuclear fuel. Inside the nuclear fuel, there's 95% uranium, which is exact sa same composition as, as when it was dug out of the ground many years ago. Through a process called uh, fluorination in a flame reactor, which is a chemical separation method, it's possible to extract this uranium uh, and then it can be sold back to the global uranium market. The remaining parts is also separated and split into two different things. The fission products, which needs to be stored for 300 years before they are safe. And then the long-lived actinides and plutonium, which we put into the, new, uh, the Copenhagen Atomics Waste Burner, where it, for many, many years we will burn it slowly and turn it into fission products which will Im eventually also be stored in the same way as these over here. Let me explain a little bit about what's inside there. So the way we think of the uh, Copenhagen Atomics Waste Burner is something we built inside a 40-foot shipping container and we put it underground surrounded by concrete to make it very safe operation. It uses these uh, passive cooling system which means that the reactor cannot melt down um, and even if uh, all power and control systems are lost or damaged, then it can automatically remove the decay heat with this system. These are 30 to 40 meter long pipes uh, drilled into the soil around the reactor, filled with oil, and the natural circulation of the oil will automatically remove the decay heat from the waste burner. Let's talk about what's inside the uh, container in this conceptual drawing. So first of all, there's the reactor core. The reactor core is a thermal core and it needs to be moderated. This can be done in two ways, either with graphite or with uh, heavy water. In this drawing we have shown heavy water. Uh, we are still researching whether heavy water can be used, but there's good indications that heavy water will be less problematic to decommission after use and uh, than graphite and also that it gives you a better neutron economy. But there are still other problems that need to be solved, but we are we're working on those. So once the salt is heated up inside the reactor core, it flows this way into the vacuum chamber where we believe that we can remove 25 to 50 percent of the fission product by a helium spraying and then the helium leaves the um, this vacuum chamber here and then it's um, this is a filter that extracts most of the xenon and krypton and and also other species of gaseous fluoride species and then mostly helium is left over here and sent into the compressor and stored in this um, compressed helium tank. The valve can slowly release the helium in the speed that we need into the vacuum cha chamber again. So there's uh, the loop of the helium loop. Let's con continue to talk about the molten salt flow. So it flows down here and the pump pumps it in through the primary heat exchanger where it sends the heat to the external systems and then finally it goes through the dump tank and back uh, into the reactor core. You should note that in case of an accident it's possible both to dump the salt into this dump tank and this valve can be opened or this valve can even have several different valves and one of them can be a freeze plug. This uh, water in here can also be dumped in less than two seconds so that the entire reactor core is emptied from the heavy water. Many people ask us you know, how can you have 50 degrees hot water right next to 750 degree uh, hot salt. Let me just talk a little bit about that. That's one of the things we are still researching, um, but we have good ideas that this will work. So in the middle here, uh, we try to show the the hot salt that is flowing. It's surrounded by a pipe made of silicon carbide, and uh, between the pipe of silicon carbide and the tank water tank. So this is the water, and this green is the uh, is the metallic wall of the water tank. Um, the metallic wall is made of uranium and zirconium. So between the metallic wall and the zirconium carbide, um, there's a very high temperature difference. And this we want to insulate with something called aerographite, which was invented in 2011 or discovered. It's a man-made material that is uh, lighter than air and it has a very, very good um, insulation properties. And at the same time, it's able to withstand the high heat and compress uh, when this um, when this pipe expands due to uh, thermal heating. Uh, 